Matthew 16 and 30. Yeah? So, here we go. When Jesus came to the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he called his disciples, he asked them, saying, Who do men say that I am the Son of Man? Yeah. Verse 14, they said, Some say he was John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, Who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. 17, Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed are thou, Simon by Jonah. For flesh and blood have not revealed unto me, but my Father, which in heaven. Verse 18. And I say unto you, and I also say unto you, thou art Peter. And upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell, that's the word gates of Hades, actually, shall not prevail against it. I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now forget that we said... I will give to you the keys of the kingdom. It says, upon this rock, pardon me, I'll build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Now, that means that he built his church from his triumph over death. That's, that's the, he built the church or the ecclesia from a triumph over death. So it says, upon this rock, Right, so that means the rock is found in his salvation, or you can call it in his finished work, in his resurrection, pardon me, which is in his finished work. And so he talks about the ecclesia, a word that is also taken from Moses' words. Don't forget we said, if you believe Moses, you believe him. Moses spoke about the ecclesia, or the kohal, that is the assembly of Israel upon the exodus. And this is the same thing that Jesus is saying right here. Much truth uh, is found in Genesis and Exodus, that very two fundamental foundational books of Scripture. We have a series like that explaining the book of Exodus. If you're a serious Bible student, have a, get a hold of that uh, teaching series, uh, the book of Exodus. The book of Exodus gives you a background of the verbiage of much of the words in both the four Gospels and the entire epistles. Because what happened to the believer is an Exodus and exactly what the book means. So he talks about that ecclesia. And in the morning, we looked at that ecclesia. Hope you are blessed in the morning. Yes, All right, we explained a little, a little bit of that, you know, what, what the ecclesia is about. It says, upon this rock, and we've seen that when God says rock, you listen to his rock, okay? Just like when he says water. When he mentions water, your mind should go to whatever he calls it. And we've seen that in this teaching. Listen very carefully. For example, the, the use of tree. When Moses writes in Genesis 2, 16 and 17 about the tree of life, I, I, I kind of believe that we ought to know that when you eat the fruit of a tree, you don't sin. So that means the tree Moses was referring to is not the tree that is in the books that we read. It must be the tree of the Bible. So when it says the tree of the knowledge of good and evil or the tree of life is not referring to a physical material that we can communicate with in that sense. Now in uh, Matthew 15, Jesus uses the word tree in the way that should bless us or fruit in this instance. Matthew 15, just the chapter before. He says, Matthew 15. Actually, Matthew 12, not 15. Verse 33. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. Then he says, O oh, generation of vipers, how can you being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man, verse 35, out of the good treasure of the heart brings forth good things. 
And an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. And I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Verse 37, for by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. So Jesus refers to the heart of man as a tree. And the words that come out of it as the fruit. So, you know, Moses has a way of writing that. If you, if you pick your Bible and you see Genesis chapter 2, let me just give you something. I, I, I think I mentioned this in Exodus already, but that is on Exodus. Look at Genesis 2, uh, 16 and 17. You see something very similar because it's the same writer. Genesis 2, 16 and 17. Then you look at Deuteronomy chapter 30. All right, that's the same writer. I, be, I believe on Friday and Saturday, I'm tempted to teach Leviticus this week. Leviticus is tempting me and numbers. So I'll decide by tomorrow. But I think Leviticus is more tempting. Hallelujah. All right, now, Jeremy 30. He says here, I want to just show you verse 10. If thou wilt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his studies which are written in the book of the law, if thou turn to the Lord with all your heart and with all your soul, for this, notice the word heart and soul, for this commandment which I say unto you this day is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off, is not in heaven, that thou shalt say, we shall go up to heaven for us and bring it to us that we may hear it and do it, neither is it beyond the sea. That thou shalt say, who shall go over the sea for us, and bring it unto us, that you may hear it, and do it. But the word is nigh thee. Where is it? In your mouth. I'm referring to in your heart. That you may do it. See, I've set before thee life and good, death and evil. So, where is faith going to be birthed? On your heart. What about unbelief? On your heart. It says, it's in the heart. So, the same word he used in Genesis 2.16, good and evil. Are you there? Life and death. He says, it's a function of man's heart. So, what we read in Genesis 2 is man's condition. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil will be a man's heart without the gospel. The tree of life is God's offer. And so Moses says, it's not far from you. It's in your mouth that is your heart. So when we preach the gospel like that, we're aiming to have the tree of life in your heart. The absence of that is a tree of the knowledge of good and what? Evil. Does it make sense? It's the same writer that wrote the truth. And Paul, in Romans chapter 10, interprets that for us. Are you still there? And I mentioned this in that series, so let me just go over it again. Romans chapter 10. This is Paul in verse 6. But the righteousness which is of faith speaks on this wise. Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend unto the heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above, who shall descend to the deep, that is to bring Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in your mouth and in your heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. So Paul picked which one? He picked the life of the Deuteronomy 30. He leaves out the death because he's talking to believers. Are you still there? So he says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. However, you will find the tree of knowledge of good and evil somewhere down this, uh, this chapter. And that's in verse 16. They have not all obeyed the gospel. They have not all obeyed the gospel. And who is he talking about? In verse 21. To Israel, he says, all day long I've stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. So that means knowledge of good and evil will be what? Doubt, disobedience. The tree of life will be found in faith in God's word. Does it make sense? All right. So, so therefore, when you hear tree, when you hear tree, for example, you ask, what is he referring to? The tree could just mean the heart of a man. So in Matthew 15, just like... Uh, mentioned earlier on Matthew 15 watch verse 13 
I find I'll start from verse 11. Not that which goes into the mouth defiles a man, but that which comes out of the mouth defiles a man. Matthew 15. Then verse 13. Every plant which my father hasn't planted shall be uprooted. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. So they ask, what's he talking about? The disciples ask. He said, are you also without understanding? That means you are in the same church. Verse 7, do you not understand? It's not, it's whatever goes into a mouth's mouth goes into the belly and is cast into the drought. That is what I'm saying is the language of the scriptures. That is, if you eat something, it goes to the restroom, it goes to the toilet. So he says here, but those things which proceed of the mouth come from the heart and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceeds from evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witnesses, blasphemies. These are the things that defile a man, but to eat with unwashing hands defile not a man. So in other words, the tree will be found where? In the heart of a man. So when you read things like that, you need to understand what it means. The tree of life, the tree, 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 tree. All right. So once again, in the morning, we looked at binding and losing. Hope that was clear for you. Was it clear for you? Right. Heaven and earth. Is heaven and earth also clear? Whatever you bind on earth has been bound in heaven. Because the kingdom is the kingdom of heaven. Does it make sense? His will is done in the earth as it is where? In heaven. So that means our walk in the spirit is heaven on earth. Does it make sense? Okay, good. So binding and losing will be the walk in the spirit, or can we call it the activities of the spirit? That would be more general, right? That would be more, that would capture it more, right? The activities of the spirit will be binding and losing, right? Okay, good. So we saw that. So those are phrases you must identify with. You know, sometimes some words can become so used that you think that they are Bible words, the way they are used. is not so. Now, earlier in the morning, so, okay, again, let's look at another way that idiom is used. You know, typically in nature, when you say heaven, you look up. When you say earth, you look around. So we can say, uh, looking up from man will be heaven. Looking around man will be the earth. So if I say whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven, that means what is above the earth, then what is in the earth? So what is above the earth? The spirit of God. Are you there? What is in the earth? Man. And when it says, in, uh, except the man is born again, born from above, born anew. He cannot see, he cannot enter. So those are phrases that refer to the difference or distinction between the flesh and the spirit. Is that clear? Okay, that's just an idiom, a, 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 a word used. So the another or again is the spirit. Now I want us to look at some, something else we've been mentioning uh, in this um, camp meeting. And it's who bless us. In John 2, once again, Jesus was in the wedding at the Cana of Galilee. Canal. Is it Canal or Cana? Whatever you like. Wedding is Canal. Canal of Galilee. And then here's uh, Mary, whom I, I hardly want to call the mother of Jesus, but let's give it to her. Lest we sound like Catholics. The mother of God. Mary herself is surprised. You know, Mary is quite a very smart woman. Uh, you know, she submitted to the authority of the apostles. She like just said, no, it's my son's church. <laughs> Are you there? When did you know him? He was already 30 when you knew him. I knew him for 30 years. So I'm the mother of the church. <laughs> Hallelujah. Imagine on the day of Pentecost, she said, Peter, before you say anything, <laughs> who do you people think you are? <laughs> After you killed my son. <laughs> when you hear the gospel, the things of earth become shadows. 
because she has known Christ, all the memory of how she breastfed him just disappeared. He just, he just raptured. Immediately. James, I was still struggling. When James got born again, he said, the Lord Jesus Christ, his own brother, he said, the Lord Jesus Christ, my Savior. The things of earth became shadows. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Let me leave that out for some, some other time. Okay, where were we? John 2. So he says to her, woman, say, we have no wine. Woman, what have I to do with thee? My hour is not come. And we said, the hour there refers to the time of redemption, the time of the exodus, the time of the, the, time of the new creation, the time of the resurrection, the time of the sacrifice. Praise the Lord. You know? Some people say, ah, Jesus rose today. Let me give you a small knock. Today is the day Jesus rose in your hometown. <laughs> a message that ought to be preached every day. So people have it only Easter Monday or Sunday. Even at that, if you look at their translations, the kind of Magid they've added to it, tasty, uh, all, the, all, this, uh, all, that, all the incondiments, because Jesus rose today, you will rise today. <laughs> they kept him in the ground for three days. They must have kept your business down for three days. <laughs> and you know your own business is 20 years. <laughs> you know, some things are just feel good sermons. You all feel good. That's right. You are more than this. They look at it and say, yes, you are more than this. You are the richest man in the world. If you say that to one believer, what about the others? We are the richest men in the world. <laughs> That's bedtime stories. You know what you tell a child to sleep? Hallelujah. All right, now, so he says wine. Now, what does he refer to as wine? We mentioned the new wine. In Mark's Gospel, chapter 2, he makes a reference to the new wine. Mark's Gospel, chapter 2. Quickly. It says in 22, no man puts new wine in old bottles. Hells the new wine doth burst the bottles, and the wine is spilled, and the bottles will be marred, and the new wine will be put in the new bottles. Now, in Matthew 26, if there's any time, any time the, the, the events of Jesus were the most solemn, they were the very last hours. There were things he did that were directly with the gospel. In Matthew 26, at the table of the Passover, he makes a, a statement. You know, he had mentioned wine earlier, mentioned wine again, then here he comes very clear. Matthew 26, as he does anyway, he says in verse 27, he took the cup and gave thanks. Now what was in that cup was wine. And he gave it to them and said, drink ye all of it. Then he says, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine. That's verse 29. It says, until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Until that day, notice what it says will happen. I'll drink it new with you. And it says, drink ye all of it. Remember we, wrote, we studied John 6. It says, my blood is drink and my flesh is meat indeed. And what was he referring to? He was referring to in John 6, 63, he says, the word is a sweet that quickeneth, the flesh profits nothing. The words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Hallelujah. So, we, we've done that study, and I believe it's clear enough. Now, by saying, I will drink it new with you in the kingdom, he's talking about the indwelling of the Spirit. By saying with you, that's identification. If you study John's Gospel, John 14, 16, he says, I'll pray the Father, he will give you another comfort that he may abide with you forever. He will the spirit of the truth in the world cannot receive because he sees him not, but you know him for it dwells with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. 
Now that word comfortless means is the word orphanos in the Greek. I will leave you without a father. I will come to you. Then he says, little while the world will see me. The world, little while they will see me no more. He said, but you see me because I leave, you leave also. At that day. So what Jesus did in redemption, the sins were canceled and then he gave us a father. I will not leave you fatherless. I will come to you. Then he says, you will know I am in my father and I am in you and you are in me. So by saying I will drink it with you, new in the kingdom, it means we are going to be joint sharers in his nature. He used the blood and the wine to describe his own person. So the new wine is Christ's life in the resurrection. Notice what he says. He says you will drink it all. Now, this is vital. In other words, if you ask someone to drink all of it, which refers to an overflow, you might actually be talking about him getting drunk. So, in the natural, when someone drinks a whole lot of wine, takes all the wine, he becomes drunk. You call him intoxicated. And so, the wine now begins to control the person in the natural. So, what is he talking about? In John's Gospel, quickly, John's Gospel, chapter 14, we're going to stay there. A bit. In John's Gospel 14 and 27, he says, Peace I leave with you. Peace I give, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So it makes a distinction between what the world gives and what he gives. So if he also says, wine is not the world's wine. It's his own wine. So, let's find out what does it do. See very carefully. Shall I give you wine? And wine is used also for celebration. You celebrate. Moses, after he asked him to put blood on the lintels, now asks him to drink to celebrate the blood. So, the wine is for celebration. So, by saying... Drink all of it. Jesus brings in the element, amongst other things, of celebration. Listen carefully. That is, celebrate exuberantly. Celebrate in an overwhelming way. Keep reading in John 16. In John 16, he says to them in verse 19, now, they ask the question, really, in verse 17 down to uh, 19. Oh, well, well, what do you mean by a little while, a little while? Then he says, do you inquire among yourself what I said, a little while? You shall not see me, and again, a little while you shall see me. Verily I say unto you, take note of this example, because we're going to come back to it, that you shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice. You shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. A woman, when she's in travail, had sorrow because her hour is come. But as soon as she's developed a child, she remembers no more the anguish, the joy that a man is born into the world. Then look at 22. And you now, therefore, have sorrow, but I'll see you again. And your heart shall rejoice. Let's finish that statement. And your joy no man takes from you. Or your joy nothing takes from you. So, the joy is referring to here is permanent. No one takes away. So, this joy is superior to circumstances. Listen well. Now, if you look back at the prophets, okay, Zephaniah chapter 3, 
and 17. So it says, Zaphar what? Zaphiah. Zaphar what? Zaphaniah. Zaphaniah is after 2 Corinthians. Before Romans. <laughs> Zaphaniah is just before our guy. It says in verse 16. In that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear thou not and to Zion, let not thy hands be slack. The Lord thy God, in the midst of thee is mighty, he will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with what? Singing. So, Zephaniah prophesies about Jesus in his resurrection. He says he will save you. He will rejoice over you with singing. Now, in John 16, he says, I give you this joy. Let no man take it from you. Now, which means joy is the fruit of salvation. Joy is an expression of what Christ has done. You know, we said Christ's work is called wine. His life is a cause for celebration. Okay? And we take all of it. So he says here that your joy, no man will take it from you. Which means it is an intoxicating one. It's an overwhelming one. Now, notice where it comes from. It comes from the indwelling, or it comes from what Christ has accomplished. It's related to an event. And that event, he spells it out. It will joy over you with singing. He will save. He will rejoice over you with singing, Zephaniah's prophecy. So therefore, that means joy is taught as an expression of the fullness that we have received in Christ. Let's see it again. In the same John 16, it talks about the persecutions that they will face. Then in verse 33, John 16. He says, I have spoken unto you that in me you have peace. In the world you will have tribulations. But be of good cheer. Hallelujah. Is this a once and for all instruction or a continuous instruction? That word good cheer is the word thasio in the Greek. It means it's from joy. It means to be courageous. It means not to be down in your countenance, to look up, to be able to have a bright countenance. It's used for confidence. Hebrews 13 and 6, for example. will boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I'll confidently say. So, Jesus teaches joy as a mark of salvation. Joy as a fruit of salvation. Joy as an indication of this new wine, the celebration that we have in Christ. I need, I need to really listen well to this. In Luke's Gospel, chapter 10, something significant happened. His disciples, 70 of them in this instance, they came back from a missionary trip. They went to preach the gospel in this instance. They cast out demons. Everybody came down, whoa, they're happy. Oh, they said, Master, even the demons are subject to us through your name. Luke 10, 17. He said, well, behold, I beheld Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Then he says to them in 19, Behold, I give you power or authority. Dunamis is power. This one is exousia. To tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by enemies hurt you. Now, don't forget, that statement 
is related to the authority he gave to them to preach. Luke 10, 19. Now in verse 20, look at, read that 20 well. Luke 10. Notwithstanding. Now I need you to re- understand this. Jesus has a way of letting you see priority. He's not saying it's wrong to be excited when demons are cast out. Mm-mm. It's not a sin. You see, Jesus has priorities. I'm going to share that tomorrow morning. He has priorities. He says, notwithstanding, in this, rejoice not that the demons or devils, according to King James, are subject to you, rather. Hallelujah. Rather. Hallelujah. Rather. Rejoice. What is Rejoice, why? Your names are written where? When did that happen? When he rose. He's saying, let there be priority. Rejoice not because the demons are subject to you. Rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Notice what happens. He says, rejoice that is exalting that. Because demons being cast out is not salvation. All right? Demons were cast out before Christ died. He says, rejoice because your names are written. Now, I need you to follow what he said. Again, priority. Look at 21 slowly. In that hour. Can you see? What happens? Jesus rejoiced. Now, heaven and the spirit, are they one and the same here? Very fine. So, in that hour, Jesus what? He rejoiced. Now, which means... Now, what it means is this, and I want you to listen to this. When it says, Jesus rejoiced, is the Greek word agaleo. A-G-A-L-L-E-O, or L-I-E-O. It's an active word. You know, you can say, ah, that guy is happy. No, 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 no. He rejoiced. Now, rejoicing, the word agaleo is from another word, agale. It means, actually, Greek scholars call it wild joy. You know what's wild? You know know what wild is? Wild is something that is uncontrolled. You know, when someone is beating, he's beating something, and then you're doing, that's controlled. Ka, tu, ka, tu, ka, ka, tu, ka, tu. (laughs) You bring down from the world. Now, he says, at that hour, Jesus now did a wild joy. Which means, as he said that, he showed them what he meant. He says, rejoice, because your names are written. Then he goes like this. That's Jesus, right? The Lord, the Lord our God. He's not on campus, though. <laughs> Very good. He goes, whoa! And they're watching him. And he goes, whoa! <laughs> and he goes, Hallelujah. Sit down. We're not there yet. So he does a wild hallelujah. Now, why again was he rejoicing? Then he said, O Father, Lord of heaven, he says, and earth, thou hast hid these things from the wise and the prudent. 
and you have revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for it seemed good in thy sight. All things were delivered to me of my Father. And no man knoweth who the Son is but the Father. And who the Father is but the Son. And he to whom Son would reveal him. Then he turned to his disciples and said privately, Guys, please are your eyes open. <laughs> they see these things. Hallelujah. They saw God rejoice. It's not from Tulsa. Hallelujah. It's in the spirit. And he looked at him. And he was, and you know, some scholar says, you twirl around. I think it's Thayas or so. He says, in reckless abandon. That means he will have just gone down. <laughs> you get it? He, he, it was wild. And uh, this man of God, he was wild. Glory to God. Amen. So he said, in that rejoice not. This is how to do it. Because your names are what? Written in heaven. Now, the fun, funny thing is, because at that point, their mind was where it was. They didn't even join him to do anything. <laughs> they just looked at him. And I said, it does strange things. <laughs> 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 He's now just jumping all over the place. No music, no drums. What kind of Christian is this? This is this is demonic. Maybe one of the demons we cast out came in. So what is this? How can a man of God be wild and is running as he's crazy? That's the, that's the wisdom of the wise. What's wrong? Did they buy him a car? No. Why is he now jumping? Did he, is he married? <laughs> he said no. Eh, did he win an election? <laughs> no. Why? He said, thank you, Father. You have revealed. Revealed. <laughs> you have revealed. That's why I jump like this, like a fool. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hold on. Look at Luke 24. The reason why they couldn't follow him was that their heart needed a Danogio. Dianogio means to be opened. So in Luke 24, when their heart, you know they were sorrowful. They were actually sorrowful. They, they, they practiced what he said. They were sorrowful. They ran away. They denied. They, they, they unbelieving. They unbelieved. They unbeliever. Everything. Now somewhere in Luke 24 and verse 45, he opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. And then he told them to preach the gospel. And in verse 50, he led them out as far as Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. It came to pass, while he blessed them, he was parted unto them and carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with what? Megas Chiro. Great. Hallelujah. In other words, what he saw, they now saw it. Great joy. This is a fruit that they have now received eternal life. Great joy. The thing is, nothing changed in the natural because he still left. Why they cried was because he left. He still left, but now they know where he is. Hallelujah. 
And so there was, you'll have wondered, so where is the Jesus? Imagine if, you, if they were crying before and you were saying, ah, uh, John, why are you crying? No, no. Curious Joshua has left. Rabbi Joshua. He said, eh? the dascal of Joshua, whatever you call him, he has gone. Forget him. Move on. Move on. <laughs> move on now. Yeah, move on. We've abandoned all to follow him. Can't, why are you following him to die? Ah, that one is not easy. <laughs> and they're complaining. So, you now go back home. You go back to Jerusalem and say, what's going on? Why are you? Say, I've seen him. Where is he? He's here. You're mad. <laughs> are you getting it now? Yes. Are you getting it now? <laughs> Sit down, come on. Hallelujah. We are taking it small by small. Hallelujah. With great joy. So joy is not the flow of the Spirit in the Holy Ghost meeting. It is the indication of salvation. Hallelujah. We're going to see later. When you are not rejoicing, it means you are walking in the flesh. That's it. Now, notice this. That phrase, agalio, has another phrase, agalasis in the Greek. Don't bother spelling it. <laughs> it was used for the baby... Look one. Let me just show you. I want to spend time to explain this. It's some of them, quite a number of these are in our book, Praise and Worship. But then, hear it either way. Luke's Gospel 1, 41. Now, watch how it is explained. It came to pass when Elizabeth had the salvation of Mary, the babe in her womb leaped. Now, that's Agalesis, to leap. Okay? To leap. Now, I'm going to, each one, I'm going to demonstrate it. In 44, it says, the babe leaped in her womb for joy. So, what does it mean to leap? To leap means this. He's going. You get it? That's exactly what Jesus did. He leaped. No one was playing music. Okay? So, our joy is not for entertainment. Okay? And it's not for losing weight. <laughs> Shonda. <laughs> In Hebrews 1.9, the writer of Hebrews speaks from the Old Covenant and says this. He says that he's anointed with the oil of gladness. The oil of Jesus is the oil of Agalio. That is, God consecrated Christ for leaping for joy. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, God doesn't have bad days. No, I'm melancholy today. I'll be sanguine tomorrow. <laughs> He's always glad. How do we know? We know because he always wants to express his agalio through us. So, he's anointed with the oil of agalysis. Let me show you one more. Look at Jude 24. Jude 24 where am I going? Jude 24. This is Jude. Jude says, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding leaps of joy. Hallelujah. Our salvation is so precious, he has to leap. Glory to God. Exceeding leaps of joy. Now, as soon as those guys heard the gospel, they were full of the new wine. And their joy couldn't be taken. 
It couldn't be taken. In chapter 2 of Acts, chapter 2 of Acts, Peter was able to locate a Messianic text in the Old Testament. Watch this. For you to know, this was why they did what they did. Peter says, look, in Acts 2, verse 24, talking about Jesus, whom God had raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it's not possible that he should be holding of it. Verse 25. And David speaketh concerning him. I foresaw the Lord always. That's Psalm 16, verse 8. Before my face. For he's on my right hand and I should not be moved. Can we take verse 26 together? Uh huh. And my tongue was glad. Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope. Look at verse 27. Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither will you suffer thy only one to see corruption. 28 together, let's go. That word countenance means at your presence, at your, re- at your resurrection. So, which means that Jesus practiced joy. In the three days. Three days. And he told them. And as he told them, they knew that is how to practice the Christ life. So when they heard that and their heart received the word, they were filled with great joy. So let's see what happens after. In Acts 2, as people got saved, in verse 47, 46, it says, And they continued daily with one accord in the temple, breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness. That bread, bread is not Passover. Or Passover has happened, though. With gladness and singleness of heart. That word gladness there is the same word for agalio, agalesis. That is, in their meetings, they were leaping. The church services were wild. Now imagine, these are 3,000. They were wild, praising God. Wild. They were leaping. Why? Because the anointing of Jesus is the oil of leaping for joy. So we give expression to Christ. In our joy. Notice how often he says it here. He says daily. Daily. Not Holy Ghost meetings. Not special meetings. Daily. And they were praising God. Wild joy. Don't say wild joy. Sorry. What's this joy about? About Jesus. It's about the new birth. It's not about miracles. There's joy for miracles which get excited. But this is about the new birth. This is a demonstration of the new birth. So the new birth is celebrated with wild joy. How can you believe in eternal salvation and you don't rejoice often? You now see people rejoice and say, what's all this? Who are you? Who is this you? You don't understand what it is. These folks knew that what Christ had done for them is forever. So they were rejoicing daily. They were leaping daily. They were, I mean, what we saw in Luke 10, 21, they were doing it in every service. They didn't need to bring in obesity. (laughs) That's an insult. They don't have to come and play back and just say, Hallelujah. We are full of new wine. Hallelujah. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Hold on. Sit down. I want to explain it well. Because some people learn some of these things, but they learned it halfway. I know some people, they are hearing me now, they are looking at me. I know you are looking at me. 
It was when you were in university. You enjoyed that. You worked in that. As soon as you came to Lagos, okay, we're in Lagos. So, you know, I grew up in Ibadan. So, I try to say, we like saying Lagos. I won't tell you what I wish, wish to say. I know. You know what I'm saying? You know, that thing that we used to do there, you know, it's for boys, boys. Now, I have bills to pay. Mm. I have bills to pay. If you like, be Bill Clinton. <laughs> I have bills to pay. You know, I have family to take care of. So, you know, uh, I prefer to go for business seminars and... Uh, and uh, entrepreneurship, 21st century uh, uh, keys to, to unlock the treasures of darkness. Um, <laughs> just activate that. Oga, I know Jesus said no one will take this joy. This one, I think a man has taken this from me. <laughs> I think men have taken this from me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's not a joy of university days. Is the joy of salvation. Yeah. Hallelujah. They were leaping daily. Because that is the anointing of the Christ. The anointing to leap. To leap. Let's watch something. Now in chapter 3, a man got healed. And in verse 8, people thank God and they praised God. But observe chapter 5. In chapter 5, they were threatened. They really threatened them. Imagine if they threatened you. If we see you, preach the gospel here again. And people that threaten them are not small boys. You know, when your mates threaten you, you say, what is it? What have I done? But when authorities say, come here, what do you say I do again? Preaching what? Look here! And these are, you know, Jesus' disciples... History has it that they were young men. Many of them were teenagers. So, now I'm not going into the theology of that, okay? But they were young men. Imagine the Nazi. What was your own name again? John. See his head. What's your name? Matthew. Uh, Thomas. What is it? You rose again. Uh, look at all of you. If I, if I hear, if I hear JG before the S, <laughs> they threaten them. Imagine Peter now saying, we'd rather obey God than you. He's intoxicated. Hallelujah. And you know, what happened was, they now went back to their company. You know, and they said, guys, there are issues. They didn't say, eh, well, how did you two preach? <laughs> Look, there are some guys like that, you know, they call themselves sisters and they say, eh, you two, how did you say it? It's the way you said it. Mm, maybe you should have packaged it well. You know, there's a way we should say, see, we should say the grace of God graciously. <laughs> Graciously, let's let's say it. You know, let's don't let's create trouble. You see, let me tell you the truth. I don't like this kind of message that people are always getting angry about. If it's the message of God's word, people should not be angry. Ah, which Bible do you read? Or oh, God, Oti oh, oh. <laughs> You are now a Muslim cleric. <laughs> what are you talking about? Jesus preached. People were angry. You, your own, nobody gets angry. You say, Hallelujah! It's a great day. It's a good thing. <laughs> What's on your mind? I beg. <laughs> and so they went back to their camp and they lifted up their voice in one accord and they prayed. They said, Grant unto your servants, they are intoxicated, that with all boldness. <laughs> Hallelujah. We may speak your word, and signs and wonders will be done in the name of your only son, Jesus. The Bible says, When they prayed, the place was shaking. Yeah, yeah. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost. 33 now says, with great power. Gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. In chapter 5, they now saw them again. Ah, say, ah, eh, eh, Chief uh, High Priest, are you see, those boys are still there. They are still there. 
called them. They now called them. When they called them, and they were dealing with their souls, they put Peter in jail in chapter 5, and he came out. They saw them again. Then Gamaliel now got up. He said, look, guys, if this is of God, it will last. If it's not of God, there's nothing you can do about it. You thought they heard. They said, okay, we heard you. Gamaliel. We respect your knowledge of the scriptures. But they can't go like that. So he now called them. All of them. Look at verse 40. That is, they wanted to let them go. This is how they let them go. Okay? Then they beat them. You know, there's private beating. There's public beating. You don't dust public beating. <laughs> you know what it means to dust? If you, are, if you have been to body house, dusting is that, that I dust it. When I was in secondary school, we put an uh, exercise book. Then they got us. Then we now found out another skill is velocity. So as they raise the cane, you will jump up. So as they are coming down, the thing just come. Bah. So when I became a senior, the junior boys had to use that one. I said, no, land first. When you land, I will give it to you direct. <laughs> they beat these guys publicly. Look at verse 41. And they departed from the presence of the council. Reborn! Sit down. Sit down now. sit down. I want you to see something. You know, Satan would have gone mad. Ah, ah. Was there pain on their body? Yes. But there was something greater in their spirit. We are anointed to leap. Hallelujah. So nothing stops the leaping. Why were they rejoicing? That they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. This is not logical. It's only the new birth that can do this. Do you know, they rejoiced. And that's the same word in Matthew 5.12. Look at it. <laughs> they were practicing the word. Matthew 5.12. Some will have just gone back and said, Pastor, I want to see you. <laughs> Look at it, Matthew 5, 12. Can we take it together? Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. So they persecuted the prophets which were before you. They were fulfilling the word. Say, so, wow. So we are worthy for this. Hallelujah. You know, that's salvation. That is the new wine. It had intoxicated them. Pain was making no sense. He said, no man, no persecution, no rivalry. So I said, hey, sir, I don't know. I was thinking, you know, if we really are sent by God, why must they be beating us? Because you look at it very well. God doesn't do evil now. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, God, ah, you know, let's look at it. This, um, if it's the ministry, God, for every vision, there's a provision. <laughs> you know, we begin to bring all sorts of wisdom keys. <laughs> they rejoice. In other words, they had seen the effect of what was going on. Their faith was producing the joy of his trial. Wow, wow, wow. You know, it's the same word used for Abraham. John 8, 56, Abraham rejoiced to see my day. Which means Abraham pre Hallelujah. Look at the reason why everyone is rejoicing, you know. Eternal realities. Hallelujah. 
We're used to, brothers and so, so just bought a, a new house. Hallelujah. Yeah, just kind of. There's nothing wrong in that, but that can be done in the mosque. Do you understand? Are you not happy today? He kept you alive. Look at you. You still have your job. Look at you. Say, this is that day. This is that day. That is not our joy. That's not our joy at all. Sit down. That's not our joy. It is the joy that Jesus experienced from the cross to the throne. That is the joy of the believer. A joy that is contradictory to the circumstance. A joy that is the exact opposite of what is going on. Why do you think James will write, count it all joy? That means it's something you have to take account of. The natural will not look nice. You will not feel good. But you have to count it all joy. When you come against trials. Because the trial of your faith will work patience. Hallelujah. So it's not the, it's not the joy. I know I'm happy this morning. You know, I know, please be careful who you give your mind to to lead worship. I wanted to say something. I took it back. <laughs> Don't give your mind to me. Just say, are you here today? <laughs> Look. <laughs> Let's go on. <laughs> the joy is not for entertainment. It is a celebration of redemption. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look at Acts 8. When Philip went down to Samaria and preached Christ, Acts 8, verse 8, there was what? Megas joy in the city. Why? Salvation. There was great joy in the city. Look at the same chapter 8. When the Enoch received salvation, look at verse 39. <laughs> Let's take it together. And when they were come out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught up Philip from the Enoch, saw him no more, and he went on his way. Ah, ah. This thing is consistent. He went rejoicing. He got back home just laughing. <laughs> and he said, what happened? Sam born again. You know, the materialism gospel is so horrible. It's so ridiculous. See, I wasn't born again when I was celebrating material things. We had been celebrating material things before we got saved. Birthday, right? People's wedding, you'll be dancing. It's not your own, no. <laughs> you, you just see your mother bring food from afar. You are ready. Do you understand? That one, that, that one is not of God. It's of man. You are just, just laughing. Your um, um, uh, Chelsea drops down to six. You are. I didn't tell you what six. So let your let your heart be rest at rest. I'm not boasting, oh Lord Jesus. I'm not boasting. Oh. <laughs> Where were we again? <laughs> you know, we have been doing all that. You know what I mean? You, get, you got your result. First, you say, yeah! That, Muslims will do it. 80, even 80s will do it. Even sadists will just say, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so when this man you know, have you observed something? He was reading Isaiah. When he got a hold of what it was, what was there, it was joy. 
revelation knowledge in itself. <laughs> Just the joy of knowing what is written. Just the joy. That's the joy of salvation. Glory to God. The Enoch was rejoicing. He went home rejoicing. You got born again. And then all they know you are saved is that you are frowning in the house. You want to go to heaven. No, brother. You go. Woo, woo, Sit down, I'm still on it. Great job. Sit down. Acts 13. Glory to God. You know? I know? There can't be joy without laughter. <laughs> Do you know why you're laughing? <laughs> now, please sit down. I-, I need your attention. I have a few more things to say. Please, please. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Acts 13. Acts 13. This was when Paul was opposed. He was opposed. The gospel was opposed. But in verse 51. Firstly, verse 48. When the Gentiles heard this, they were glad. They were glad. Chiro. They exalted. These words have to do with shouting. Shouting. Wow! Wow! We are still there. Look at verse 52. Look at verse 52. And the disciples were filled with joy. That is, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. You can't be filled with the Holy Ghost. The word filled is plural. They were overwhelmed with joy. You know, when you're with joy, your shirt will be wet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all over. It's all over. Have you, have you, have you seen why they are all rejoicing? Yeah. Overwhelmed. Yeah. Hallelujah. Sit down a bit. Watch this. Oh yeah. Acts 15. When Paul and Barnabas were coming back from the Gentile nations. And in verse 3. It says they brought on their way by the church. They passed through Phoenix and Samaria. Declaring the conversion of the Gentiles. What happened? You know, you know what? You, you probably got a call about a contract and they told you, you know, we're not giving you again. 
and you go sad. That's what natural men do. It's not strange. You go sad. But then someone picks the phone. One of the people that you got saved by preaching two weeks ago. He says, I just want to thank you for the book you gave me. <laughs> Everything you were thinking of just disappears. <laughs> Hearing about salvation must always bring rejoicing. <laughs> always. Always. I mean, always. So when you are returning from evangelism, you go, Hallelujah. Sit down. Make sure you hear this one finish. In verse 31, after they finish the council meeting and they, ag- they agreed that they should tell the Gentiles you are saved, don't allow those legalism people to hinder you. They now went back to the churches. Verse 31. And in verse 30, they were dismissed. They came to Antioch and when they had gathered for the multitude together, they delivered the epistle. And when they read that epistle, they rejoiced for the consolation. That wow, wow, wow. Wow, 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 wow. wow. The word of God The word of God always brings rejoicing. You know, so far, nobody has rejoiced because I don't get a lot. You know, all those things have been brought. It's brass for gold. Brass for gold. People have brought in brass. It stinks. It stinks. It's horrible. It's horrible. Don't bring the practice of the world to the body of Christ. It stinks. We and the world don't celebrate together. No, we don't. What we believe is different. What inspires us is different. Our values are different. Our dance is different. Sit down one minute. I'm not done. In chapter 16, there was a jailer. He had just heard that Paul and Silas had a jailbreak. And he said, ha! And he knew his job was going to be at risk. And maybe they would kill him. So he wanted to kill himself. Paul said, do yourself no harm while we're all here. He said, I've heard you. What must I do to be saved? Paul said, hold on. Believe the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll be saving you and your house. Then he took him to the house and shared the gospel. The Bible says as he heard the gospel and he believed it. Verse 34. He says he now what? In believing in God, he now agaliled. Wait. Had he gotten a new job? No. As the employer said, you let him go? No. Salvation overwhelms all of that. It's, it's, it will drown your fears. Salvation drowns, it drowns that feeling. It takes it away. Hallelujah. It, it, the man just started going in his, in his own house as he got the gospel and he said, I believe in my heart. He rose from the dead. You mean it alive is in me now? And he went, whoa, whoa, whoa. abandonment in wild joy in chapter 20 Paul now he tells the church you know I'm going to Jerusalem I may not see your face again because he had been told he was going to face persecution and when the church heard it, the church of Ephesus oh they began to cry and they wept oh my god you may won't see this man of God again and they were weeping in chapter 21 to stop him again they gave a prophecy and the Paul said to Agabus, why do you break my heart with joy? I'm going there. Why did he say all of that? Because he has said in chapter 20, verse 24, he said the Holy Ghost has shown me, all right, persecutions that lie in wait of the Jews. He said, but you know what? (laughs) I'm determined to preach the gospel of the grace of God. And I will finish my course with joy. Look at that. 
They are going to persecute him, probably kill him. He said it will be in joy. That is contradictory. He knew they were going to put him in prison and kill him, most likely. He said it will still end in joy. Does it make sense? <laughs> it doesn't, you can only get that from Jesus. That doesn't make sense. You know, when they, when they had the crash uh, in the ship, he said, guys, be a good chair. You know, we'll be fine. All of us. Just that the ship, you know, you'll have to let it go, okay? He's so calm. One time he was before, Look at Acts 26. This was a guy that they put in captivity. Agrippa says, Paul, this one, permit thou to speak for yourself. Then Paul said, verse 2. <laughs> Doesn't make sense. That word there is Machairus. I am fortunate. What did you say? You know, <laughs> the guy go, ah! Say, bros, I'm happy. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. This is what Jesus meant by no man, no one will take this joy. This is the new wine. It's only found in his resurrection. Hallelujah. It's the new wine. Peter, 1 Peter 1. Peter puts it in the pieces as well. So tonight, we're going to have more laying on of hands. One of the ways we'll receive, that's how we receive instructions. Because it's the word of God. One of the ways we receive the things of the Spirit is joy. Thank God for falling under the power of God. That will happen. But also know there's a stream of joy. That receives what the Father has given to us. There's a stream of joy. There's a stream of joy. Hallelujah. You know, you learn the things of the Spirit. One of the people that taught me flowing with the Holy Ghost, a friend of mine, years ago, I noticed something. Then, that was like late 95. When hands are laid on him, he will agarre you. They may be falling the later. And I asked him, he said, well, that's how to receive. So I learned that. That there is, sometimes, you know, you fall under the power of God, which is a demonstration of the physical glory of God. But also, even with that, sometimes you're down, then you get up. And I say, wow, 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 wow. Wow, 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 wow. wow, wow. Hallelujah. So I say, how can somebody fall down? Then he gets up, then he's laughing. Are you people well if we be beside ourselves? It is the love of Christ that constrains us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Look at what Peter says, 1 Peter 1 6. You learning something? 1 Peter 1 6. Peter says, Wherein, wherein you greatly rejoice. Though now for a sin even me, you are evidence in the manifold temptation. Say, look. Right now, you have manifold temptations, but look at what it says in verse 8. Whom you have not seen, yet you love. In whom though now you see not, yet believing, you are Galio with joy unspeakable. Full of glory. Hallelujah. Joy was an atmosphere in the churches. Atmosphere, come rain, come shine, in and out of season. Joy was an atmosphere. Why? Because it's the atmosphere in our spirits. The believer's spirit is a spirit of joy. The believer's spirit, thank you, sir, is a spirit of joy. Say, my spirit is a spirit of joy. Look at chapter 4, verse 13, 1 Peter. In verse 12, 
Think it not strange because the fear of trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. Look at verse 13. But rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's suffering. You rejoice. When was the last time you rejoiced that you were opposed with the gospel? And you rejoiced. Say, Father, I thank you. You mean I can partake of this? Hallelujah. Remember one time like that, we went somewhere to preach. I mean, it was not nice. And then they started to throw stones. I said, sir, bro, there's something in my head. Say, I'm feeling it too. <laughs> and it was stones. I said, ha! And so they started coming like this. Hey! My, my shoes are still there. <laughs> About 25 years ago. I said, we got, when we not God, I said, ah! Glory to God. Oh. And, we, and somehow, we were laughing over the situation. I just love it. <laughs> Serious matter. <laughs> Despite the fact that I didn't know what I know now, I knew something was joyful about it. I just go. <laughs> now, wow. Ogao. Why do you say Ogao? Because that's what we knew then. But now, you just say glory, 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 glory. glory. Hallelujah. Our joy is the joy of salvation. No wonder David will say, restore unto me. This is a king with money. Say, no. What is most vital is the joy of salvation. Not the joy of owning things. The joy of salvation. Hallelujah. Are you following this? So Paul writes to the church in Philippi. That church was facing serious trials and persecutions. Paul reminds them in Philippians 1 and 29. Turn there quickly. Philippians 1 and 29. He says, look, for unto you it is given on behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. So he says, look, when I'm not there, even though you are passing through trials, walk at your salvation. With trembling and fear. Don't grumble. Don't murmur. Because sometimes you can just, uh, what, what's the government doing? Uh uh, what are they doing? Uh, how can they allow, how can they allow people to just come and disrupt our service like that? How can they allow now? Uh, the government should protect Christians. What is the vice president doing? I mean, they should write something and say, Sorry, are you a Christian? <laughs> government doing. Like Paul going to Agrippa, you know, you ought to protect the churches. Mr. Agrippa. No, it's true. We are citizens. <laughs> said, man, I wish you were just like me. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Many Christians have heard the wrong gospel. They've heard the wrong things. Look at this. He says, you know what? Be blameless. Don't dispute. Don't murmur. Be blameless and harmless. Sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked perverse nation. Among whom, in spite of the persecution, shine as light. How? Hold forth the word of life. That I may rejoice in the day of Christ. That I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Then he says, Yea, if I be offered upon sacrifice and service for your faith, I joy and rejoice with you all. In the midst of hardship, Philippi, rejoice. Don't murmur. Don't fight. Rejoice. The background of this letter was that they were facing serious persecution. In verse 18, let's take verse 18 together. For the same cause also do you joy and rejoice with me. Are you there? Are you there? Look at chapter 3. Finally, my brethren, verse 1. Rejoice in the Lord. Hallelujah. To write the same things unto you. Look at, oh my God. It is not grievous, but for you it is safe. In chapter 4, look at verse 1. Let's take it together. Chapter 4, verse 1. Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved, long for my joy and my crown. So stand fast in the Lord, my beloved. Glory to God. When you see your disciples, the work of the gospel in your hands, are you full of joy? Are you full of joy? Sometimes you, you've, you've had it a bit rough, you know, Maybe in the office, maybe in the business world, maybe in school, you know, and you're trying to sort it out. 
Then you just see that guy who used to be a drug addict and had him atheist. He now has his Bible. He's going for the fellowship meeting. You go, <laughs> you know, you say, Satan, can you see that? He's born of God, oh. He has the Holy Ghost, oh. He's the Son of God, oh. Paul says, you are my joy. You are my joy. You are my joy. You are my... When you see people learn the word, and they are growing in it, and they are teaching it, you go, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This is not a move of the Spirit. This is a move of the church. That's who we are. Hallelujah. Our joy. It's not, it's not like the spirit is just moving me. No, 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 no. It's an instruction. The spirit moving you is in you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Say you are my joy. Glory to God. Ah, when I see you, I'm full of joy. I leap. I leap much for joy. When I, when I see you preach the gospel and I see you on the streets, you are laying hands on someone and I'm in my car, I'm going, <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. Believers must know what brings joy to us. But you see, when you are taught materialism, you can't understand this. The materialism gospel is a cancer. It's worse than legalism. It takes away the joy of Christianity. It reduces us to mere men. Mere men. We can get very funny testimonies. I got to that company, I was a messenger. Now I'm a manager. Ja, 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 ja. An atheist can say what you are saying. In fact, they have better testimonies. But we know where it stops. I see somebody born again. The atheist is saying, what's going on there? I say, huh? 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 Sit down. He says, now my, you know, this man where? No, I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. Woo! Oh, wait a minute. Sit down. Give me a few minutes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He said, we are the circumcision which worship God and rejoice in Christ Jesus. Ah. We rejoice in Christ Jesus. Christians ought to go to each other's homes to just laugh. Say, so why are you here? Let's just rejoice. Because you know, wine should be shared. Come on. If you see a Christian, no, you. Say, come and take a drink. You have not been full of wine today. You have been taking the flesh. Come and take the new wine. Come and take the new wine. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Somebody gets into your house. No music in the background. No drums playing. And you're going, whoa, whoa, whoa. We're almost done on this. Glory. Jesus now gave a parable. He said, for every soul that repents, there's joy in heaven. So you go on evangelism. Ten, God born again. So his joy raised to power ten. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. No, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. 
Sit down. Why do believers lack joy? Paul says, he gives them a warning in verse 3. Let nothing be done in strife or vain glory. Strife takes away rejoicing. When we're walking in the flesh, we're fighting over earthly things. We're dominated by mundane, worldly things. But just like Jesus said, for the joy is set before him. What's that joy? You and I. See, if your rejoicing is not about lives, you're a mere man. If it's not about lives, you're a mere man. That's what you are. You know, some of you have people in this hall that I'm sure you struggle before they got born again. As you remember now, joy is flowing in your heart. I say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 That's the new wine. It, it intoxicates you. Your colleagues at work cannot explain why you are always happy. They reduce our salary, you are, you are laughing. I said, did you hear me? We can't take it. Our covenant with God cannot take reduction. Look at that. Woo! Glory! Hallelujah! So Paul now tells them, Philippians 4 and 4, let your moderation be known unto all men. That's the word gentleness. The Lord is at hand. Philippians 4 and verse 5, sorry. And then verse 6, verse 4, pardon me. He says, rejoice. Paul now says, again. Now, look at one single letter. He says, rejoice. Again, I say. Again. Then he says in six, be careful for nothing. With prayer and thanksgiving. Let your requests and supplication, let your requests be made known to God. Why? They are pressing through persecutions. That's why the answer is not a lot. It's the peace of God. That's a prayer and persecution that passes all human understanding. EWK showed us a, a, a translation, the wind mouth translation. He says, like a garrison of soldiers in a troubled country, it will guard your heart. So there will be no fear there. Hallelujah. You are full of joy. If, you see, rejoicing is not just in Karis camp meeting. I told you it's not Tulsa. Hallelujah. In those days they used to say that if you miss heaven, go to Tulsa. What an what what evil brother Higgin had then. You release joy. So Paul says, in case you are struggling with it, whatever things are pure, any praise, good report. When you find yourself not rejoicing, check your thoughts. You are permitted on Christ's thoughts. Think on these things. Think on them. Change what you are thinking. Salvation of souls is pure. It's of good reports. It's of praise. Look at this. Philippians 4. Are you learning something here? In verse 10. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly. That now, at the last, your care of me had flourished again when you all were careful, but you lacked opportunity. He was in jail when he was saying this. The new wine is spirit-inspired joy. Paul says, be not drunk with wine when it's excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to yourselves in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Why am I full of joy? I'm full of joy in the service to God. I'm full of joy in prayer. I'm full of joy as I give. I'm full of joy in persecutions. I'm full of joy because souls are one. I'm full of joy seeing other believers. I'm full of joy at the teaching of God's word. Look at 1 Thessalonians 2.19. Hallelujah. Glory to God. From today. You must have joyful days all the time. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, not rejoicing is a sin. You ought to ask yourself throughout today, did I rejoice? Ah, I can't sleep yet. I can't sleep yet. Glory to God. Glory to God. Don't forget, it's not just the joy of the Lord is my strength. He has made me sad. Sorry, he has made me glad. It's called Agalio. In case you didn't know what it was, Jesus gave you the description. He said you will leap. You will leap. You will run. You would swell around in wild joy. In First Thessalonians two, I say this to all preachers, which you are. Verse nineteen, Paul says, "What is our hope, or joy, or crown of rejoicing? Is it not you? Hallelujah." The psalm is saying, those that sow in tears will come back home with sheaves of joy rejoicing. Say, so when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, when the day the dream, for the Lord has filled our mouth with laughter. Glory to God. You do not need hands to be laid on you to rejoice. Just do the word. You have cause to rejoice. You are born of God. You are born of the Spirit. Woo! If there's somebody beside you, who is looking? Preach the gospel to the person. If somebody is just looking, let him hear the gospel. Thank you, Lord. You know we'll do much of this tonight. Don't worry. Tonight, uh, I trust the Lord to lay hands on everybody here. So don't bother changing your seat. I'll get to where you are. Amen. I learned some of us get here for 3 a.m. Serious? I heard it for the first time today. That this place is jam-packed by 4 a.m. You know what? Don't worry, we'll get another bigger place next time okay <laughs> but you see don't come here 2 a.m again it's too early hallelujah i was surprised but i remember when i was a younger preacher too myself and my friends who went for a program at the uh, um the christ life church but bishop wale okay now and bishop in lopu taught something about the new covenant and we were so thrilled 1994 and then we said if we go who we'll miss this place? They say, you know what? Let's stay at the bus stop. We stayed there the next day. But the next day, we entered the church together. You know, so I understand it. But you know, this place is different. Okay. So you could get here like five, it's okay. But three? That's too deep in the split realm. But God is meeting your expectations. He knows your heart desire. Hallelujah. I understand how you feel. You can't travel all the way down and then sleep and be dreaming. What are you dreaming about? I understand. Okay. Hallelujah. But tonight, by the help of the Holy Ghost, hands will be laid on you. The things of God stand. You'll be full of joy. Some things will drop off. Hey.
Wow, wow, wow. You have everlasting joy. You know the Bible says everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. That's why your joy is not seasonal. It's now and forever. There's always a laughter in your spirit. There's a leap in your spirit. There's a rejoicing all over you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Whatever Satan distracted you with, you are full of joy now. When you are full of joy, you hear God well. When you are full of joy, you walk by faith. When you are full of joy, you use your faith. When you are full of joy, you pray. When you are full of joy, you do the word. Let nothing take your joy. Is that song by Brother Derek Uwapo? Uh, he he, he composed that song, and one thing that's called the Nights of Love this song. He says, Sing it. Bless it. Rejoice. Where the people are. They are all there. Can you sing it? Okay. Sing it.